Hi guys, we'll be discussing fuzzy sets and fuzzy logic today. So fuzzy sets, as I already told you, there another method to represent uncertainties, just like our probabilities were. So these they use a similar concept to what we have seen in the case of belief sets in Dempster-Shaffer theory, and we have a membership value associated with each element in a set. So I'm talking set a lot of times here. So what is a set here? What is a fuzzy set? What is the difference between a fuzzy set and the classical notation of sets that we know? So let us try understanding that better with the help of these small figures here. So this is the example of a classic set. So over here we see A and B being two sets. X is an element that is present inside A and O is another element that is present inside B. If I ask you what's the probability of X being present in A, your answer would be one same as the case with property of O being present in B. Now, let us look at this other case, this second case. Now, in this case, X is present in A, but not completely. O is present in A, but not completely. B is present in, sorry, O is present in B, but not completely. Now, if I ask you what's the probability that X is present in A, and what's the probability that O is present in B, the answer is no longer 1. 1 is not the right answer. It's something else. So fuzzy sets is exactly this thing. You can have elements that need not always be completely present inside the set. Let us try understanding this with an actual example. <coughs> Imagine A, the set A being young and set B being old. Now, if I know that X is a person whose age is 59 and O is another person whose age is 61. Now, our general notation is that anyone who is 60 year old is considered as a senior citizen. So, I would consider anyone below 60 to be young. So, X is now being classified in a crisp set as young and O is being classified as old. But if you look at the age difference, there is just two years. Now, obviously, you cannot call a 59-year-old as a young person. That's odd. You can call a 13-year-old or a 7-year-old as young, but 59 is definitely not young. We know that. Now, look at the second example. Now, over here, let's assume that X is, let's say, 35-year-old and O is 59-year-old. Uh, so in this case, 35 is definitely not very young. He's young, yes, when compared to this O, but he's definitely not young. So that is the reason this EX can be present inside the CA, but not completely. So it's sort of like 80% present inside A. Similarly, if you look at this O, you can classify that as both young and old. And this person is not definitely completely old, he is not definitely completely young. So he's sort of lying in between. So you could call 10% young and 10% old. That's what O is. I guess this pretty much makes it clear what fuzzy sets are all about. So where are they actually useful? Now, whatever I have said would have definitely given you a big picture here. Now you say that a person is young and there you could add other adjectives to it you would call a person very young so a very young person could be like 10 year old and a young person could be defined as 20 year old and someone who is not that young could be defined as 30 year old so this fuzzy sets they help us define these additional adjectives to whatever definitions we have whatever nouns we have and just like our probabilities our membership values also lie between 0 and 1 so one is when an element is completely present inside the set, like in this case, and zero is when it is totally not present in it. So the probability that O belongs to A is zero. And let us try understanding the differences between probabilities and a fuzzy sets with another small example. Uh, if you say that the probability of A is 0 0.6, we can also say that the probability of negation A is 0 0.4. That is what our probability theory says. Now, mu is the way you define a membership value. 
if mu a x is equal to 0 0.6 so what this says is the membership value of x x is the element being present in a so a is the set is 0 0.6 we cannot say that this is the case so this is definitely not the case as you have seen now here o belongs to a sort of like 10 percent we cannot say that o belongs to b 90 percent if you look at this this is 10 percent and this is also 10 percent so this is not always the case here and this is another thing with fuzzy logic in the case of our propositional logic we know that a statement is either true or false but in fuzzy logic a statement can be both true and false and it can be neither true nor false i'll help you understand this with the help with the help of a few paradoxes uh, before that there's another small property here classical laws such as this they don't apply anymore because all these laws the ones that you are seeing they were defined for propositional logic where a proposition is either true or false so that's sort of like binary over here we have multi-valued logic so that is definitely not the case here as I already told you let us look at these paradoxes to help us understand how true and false can both occur at the same time in the case of fuzzy logic so there's something called the Russell's paradox let us have a read a barber who himself has a beard shaves all men who don't shave themselves so the problem here is who shaves the barber now who does the barber not shave all the people who don't shave themselves so who is going to shave the barber i mean the barber has to shave himself so if he shaves himself so it's sort of like paradox right so that's going against his own ideals so this is a paradox which cannot be solved in the case of propositional logic and which can be solved in the case of fuzzy logic so it's sort of a true and false at the same time let us look at another paradox all cretans are liars said the cretan so cretans i guess are some kind of uh, a tribe so cretans are all liars is what one specific cretan is saying so if this is true like let us assume that cretan is saying the truth so if he's saying the truth then this statement is right so if this statement is right then this cretan is also supposed to be liar then there is no possibility that you can assume him to be saying the truth a paradox so even if you consider the other case you consider cretan to be a, a liar so if you consider him to be a liar then this statement will be wrong so that means all the cretans are telling truth once again you have assumed the opposite so another paradox so things like this they're pretty much soluble in the case of fuzzy logic but not in the case of traditional propositional logic so definitely fuzzy logic is a very powerful mechanism and then we're going to look at this in much more detail in the next class